I'm going to share my screen here. All right, so I'm always excited to see how many people are interested in this project because this is a project that I never get tired uh, talking about. It's just just so cool. Just um, so anyway, I always like to start with um, talking about how special Lucy's warblers are. They are tiny, they're gray, they're kind of shy and they go unnoticed oftentimes. They also may be mistaken for burdens around our yards, but Lucy's warblers are actually quite unique. Uh, they're one of only two cavity nesting warblers in North America, the other being the prothonotary warbler um, that doesn't really breed here. Uh, they're also the only warbler to nest in non-riparian lowland desert here. And they do breed in riparian areas, but they don't necessarily have to, which helps our nest box project to be possible. No other bird is as closely tied to a single tree species as Lucy's warblers are to mesquites. There were even called mesquite warblers once. Lucy's warblers are early nesters. They arrive in the Tucson area starting about mid-March. They get to business almost right away. And by the end of March and beginning of April, they start building their nests already. Uh, considering that they're cavity nesters, they take advantage of somewhat uh, cooler temperatures that we have at that time. And their peak nesting is in April and May, though some do finish up into mid-June as well because they have two broods. They're a very dense nester for not being colonial type nesters. Uh, we documented them nesting simultaneously just inches apart as you can see in this picture here. Even though this is a very unique species, they're very understudied. Part of the reason may be that they have a limited range here in the United States. Western species have a tendency of low study numbers. Ornithological studies tend to be very Eastern centric. Tucson is right in the heart of their breeding range as you can see marked by a red star here. And this makes it the perfect place to study Lucy's warblers. A lot of their breeding phenology remains poorly documented, as you can see in this excerpt from Cornell's Birds of the World. Um, not only is there little information, but there's also a bit of misinformation out there, um, such as this paper from 1983 that's misquoted in multiple places. It says, Unlike many cavity nesting species, Lucy's warblers will not use nest boxes. <clears throat> when in fact, when you read the paper, it actually says that Lucy's warblers did not use their nesting boxes, but it was just may have been the wrong type of nest box that they used. So we know now that it was just the right, the matter of uh, finding the right type of nest box for them. Currently, Lucy's warblers are identified as a species of conservation concern by Arizona Game and Fish, and they are a focus species for important bird areas in Arizona. Like most other species, Lucy's warblers suffer from habitat destruction in their breeding range. Large cavity bearing mesquite trees have become scarcer due to declining water tables, development, and over pruning in urban areas. And urban mesquites are capable of providing sufficient foraging opportunities, but they often lack the, the type of cavities that Lucy's warblers love when um, heavy branches split under their own weight or the bark starts peeling and creates a crevice that they love. Uh, Lucy's warblers are also known to use saguaro cavities, but those are already in great demand by other cavity nesters in our area. So with an addition of nest boxes in urban and suburban 
um, areas, we can improve their habitat by providing a vital part of that habitat at home aspect, which is a safe place to nest. And this all led us at Tucson Audubon to conduct various studies to learn more about Lucy's warblers, uh, what they prefer, what their phenology, breeding phenology is, and this would allow us to develop the best practices for a conservation plan for the species. A few years back, Tucson Audubon started receiving reports of Lucy's warblers using unconventional areas to nest, such as um, decorative um, fountains, decorative houses, gourds. This led us to develop our initial five designs that you see on the left. And they ranged from typical uh, looking rectangle with a circular entrance hole and also to PVC pipes, which were modeled after a reported nest inside of a metal pole that was holding up a sign. We also located natural nests and returned when they were no longer being used so we could measure them and photograph them. And we discovered this apparent preference for two points of exit as you the picture on the left, this is a little Lucy's warbler parent. This is their nesting material. The peeling bar creates um, an entrance on the front here and also on the back. And the findings helped us develop a new design of nest box, which we ended up calling the triangle nest box here. And it uh, does the job of biomimicking the two exit point of a natural nest that we see in the wild. So we wanted to know which one of the designs we came up with would they prefer the most. And we ended up installing 60 experimental points to test our designs uh, by using populations of Lucy's warblers as our little focus groups to tell us what they like. We chose three locations, uh, the first one being 7B Birding Trail in Mammoth, which has a wonderful mesquite bosque woodland, um, a favorite of Lucy's warblers. Tankaverde Wash in East Tucson, where we uh, have a, a thin green belt along the creek. And the De Anza Trail in Tubac, uh, where the river flows and provides a riparian area with cottonwoods and other plant species. And of course, each location already had Lucy's warbler populations that we could um, tap into, I guess. This study was funded by grants from Tracy Avery and Arizona Sportsman for Wildlife Conservation grants, as well as private donations. And in this picture on the right, you see what one point looked like. So all of these boxes is at one point, for the most part, near each other to so that the birds would go for a specific design. And we had 60 of these to have good substantial data to derive from. And nest boxes at each point were varied in order so that we could make sure that they're not just going for a specific spot on the tree, but rather the design of the nest box. This is a three years worth of data of the experiment. Maybe a little bit difficult for you to read on your screens, but the first two categories here is a large triangle and a small triangle. Those are just uh, the same type of design, but different volumes. And then we have others that you can see comparatively were not used just as much. And you can see that the two categories of the triangle design towered over the rest, making it a solid finding over the three years that we weren't able to nail down that triangle design. We also conducted a height experiment, which was designed to see if there's a preference for a nesting height. We found Lucy's warbler natural nests 
um, as long as low as three feet off the ground and as high as 15 feet off the ground. But we wanted to see if there's actually a specific height that they, they, they go for if they were presented with identical um, nest boxes on the same tree. Last year, we tested the heights up to nine feet and nine feet off the ground was the most popular preferred height. So this past year in 2020, we decided to expand, expand the heights to 12 and 15 feet off the ground, as you can see in this picture. And they were all on the same side of the tree. And we had 60 of these points, again, to have good data to derive from. And this is our results graph. The colors represent different locations. The categories on the bottom are 5, 7, 9, 12, and 15 feet off the ground. Results were mostly the same across the different locations. There is a preference for nest boxes highest off the ground, which leads us to believe that when presented with many equal options, Lucy's warblers to lean towards selecting the highest offered nest box, uh, likely for that security feel. Um, but again, that's just not always available in nature and they just end up going for something that is um, best suited for their nest. So what does that mean uh, for the nest box in your yard? Well, actually higher tra tra foot traffic areas uh, next to the box would require the nest box to be uh, higher off the ground just to give that um, bit more of a privacy to the bird as they can tend to be a little shy. But what I found most important is how much cover is surrounding the nest box. So definitely focus on that. And all this information helped us provide informed best practices and we are able to make our projects the most successful and allow people at home to install them to the best potential as well. And I'll go over best practices also later in the presentation. Overall, with these experiments, in 2020 alone, we had 165 nests. That, and with four to five eggs in each, we estimate about 660 to 825 potentially fledged young from those nest boxes alone. And Tallying up all the nest boxes, we um, currently have over 3,000 on the landscape now, and that includes Lucy's Warbler nest box trails as well as nest boxes at people's homes. We have made it our mission to spread the word about it. Um, we have also spread the boxes into New Mexico and Colorado where we know Lucy's Warblers do nest in some parts. Um, where their breeding range just barely kind of reaches those states. And we also have 355 uh, owners who registered their nest boxes online with us. And that number grows every day. This really helps us keep track of our reach and it helps us understand the distribution of successful nests. So we can compare those urban, suburban, and native wild areas and how many nests we get in each category. In 2020, we were also able to add another dimension to our studies. North American Bluebird Society offers a grant for research into any cavity nesting species of North America. And we were very fortunate to receive this funding from them to research using cameras and study their breeding biology to add to our understanding of the species. What we hope to address is timing required for nest building, incubation, uh, nestling stage, fledging, as well as time between broods. All these things are either poorly documented or not documented at all in the, in the literature. Lucy's warblers also um, get their nests parasitized by cowbirds. 
and predated upon by different species of animals. So we were hoping to document this using cameras and develop a predator guard that would work and best accommodate these um, needs that would allow the birds to nest safely and um, have the eggs and the nestlings out of reach of any predators. We're still working on those. Uh, we're, we have another year of this study coming up this year. And one of the best tools we found were these live cameras. We identified nest box owners who were willing for us to use their electricity and Wi-Fi to monitor their nest boxes. Live cameras have a downfall of needing that power and Wi-Fi, so they have to be near homes, but they make up for that by allowing for so much information being able to be gathered from these. Uh, they have motion detection, undetect undetectable night vision, and 24-7 footage archive. So we were able to monitor five nests at various stages of completion. And we were also able to provide our members a live view into each of, into one of these boxes on this link here to sunaudubon.org slash Lucy Cam. And I'll show you uh, some highlights from the, from the nest boxes here. Um, I hope it, reads okay through Zoom. I want to play this uh, short video clip, but um, if it doesn't read well through Zoom, uh, Luke will send out a link that you'll be able to watch afterwards as well. So we're going to go ahead and give it a try anyway. Oh, Luke. Yeah. States that males are, are you able to hear the, the narration? I believe so. Oh, you are? Okay, cool. Let, let's see. Let's find out. Company females who do the actual yes. nest, which is what we see here. Oh, changed her mind. And in this video, a rival Lucy's warbler steals nesting material. Sometimes other visitors got captured on the live camera, such as this Anna's hummingbird. Lucy's didn't seem to mind. There was also a house sparrow who visited the nest, but thankfully it was empty at the time because house sparrows can get pretty aggressive. While the female did all the incubating, the male fed her on the nest. You can really tell here that the cap on the female is very faint. You can hardly even see it on here. She looks so cozy. When it's time to feed the hatchlings, it's the job for both parents. It gets pretty crowded as they grow. In this nest, there were five chicks. By about day 11, we started to see chicks finally fledge. Check out the shocked faces of the siblings left in the box. Fledging time between chicks varied. Some left within minutes of each other, some within hours, and then some within days. The nests we monitored had chicks leave within one, two, and three days of each other. We were also able to tell what type of prey items the parents brought back to the nest. For example, this nice big praying mantis. 
and the screen in Schwarm. We also recorded a couple heart-stopping moments. In this video, we see a stray cat climb the tree to investigate the nest boxes early in the morning. The female was incubating eggs at the time and flew out way before the cat got close. As you can see here, the eggs got a bit shaken around, but none of them fell out and all hatched just fine. When we saw these, this footage, the homeowner installed baffles and spikes to deter the cat. We didn't see the cat again. I think we can all agree that cats belong indoors. Another time, I noticed that a chick was acting strangely in the nest. While its sibling had fledged earlier that day, this chick was bouncing up and down without making any progress, as if it was being held down by something. I alerted the homeowner who was able to climb the ladder and free the chick who was being held down by a piece of hair. The chick then joined the sibling and parents in the tree. Overall, the live cameras have been an excellent tool for studying Lucy's warblers. All right, so I hopefully you were able to see some of the footage there. And um, I will send out the link and there are more clips available from our live camera on the link that's just below. That's to sonatabond.org slash Lucy cam. And the live camera, of course, is not active right now as they're not nesting, but we are hoping to have it again this year for us to monitor another um, successful year for them as we're learning so much from them. We also have an owl and a kestrel live cameras that will um, make available for everybody to see once they start nesting. And we have a YouTube channel called Tucson Audubon Nest Boxes that has a lot of videos from the Tucson area nest boxes uh, for those species. And it's really kind of fun to watch and see them raise their broods. If you subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel, you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. So that's also a, a good option there. So from these clips and the nests we analyzed, we were able to put this timeline together. Uh, keep in mind our sample size is very small, but we hope to strengthen this data this year with additional observations. Uh, so let's break it down. Uh, the nest building stage took 12 days from when we started seeing Lucy's warblers bring nesting material to the laying of the first egg. Uh, first egg was laid and one egg was laid one, one a day is what I should say. So the clutch, depending on the clutch size, it would take three to six days for them to lay all the eggs. Um, the average number of eggs we've seen in a clutch is four. Incubation then lasted about 15 days uh, to first egg hatching. At least one chick always fledged on the 11th day after hatching. Uh, but the remaining chicks followed within minutes or hours or days. So uh, the longest it was is three days. We found a second clutch within 10 days in the nest box adjacent to the original. So they didn't reuse the nest box they used the first time, but we do believe it was the same pair based on territory and observations. And Lucy's warblers are known to have two clutches. So I'm going to pause here and I'm going to see if there's any questions because I'm seeing the chat light up a little bit before I move on to the next part. Thanks, Ole. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Horst has answered a few of these questions. So most of them have been answered, but yeah. uh, let me go back to one that Scott had near the beginning. Uh, Scott says, I don't have a mesquite in my yard, but two overhang into my yard. How far away can I hang my house to still be attractive? Yes, that's actually a good segue into the next section where I, I go over best practices. Um, if you Perfect. have mesquite trees in or around your yard, that already increases your chances of having a Lucy's warbler. 
um, I would um, I would suggest putting it in that mesquite tree if you're able to, if you have permission to use that tree. If not, you can put it uh, on a, on your house if that's next to that tree, uh, as long as it has some shade and protection as well. And I had I had, I had one okay, other question. Ahead. I had one other question about the egg laying. Are they synchronous or asynchronous? I mean, do, do they the females start to uh, incubate? Uh, immediately or until all the uh, eggs are laid? She's incubating immediately. Yes, she's starting in there. Thanks. See, uh, Jean was wondering if any test boxes were in Gilbert, so like in the Phoenix area? No, there were no test boxes there, but uh, Lucy's warblers do nest up there, so you can install some nest boxes in your Phoenix area. Yeah, and there's a question about whether you could use a different tree besides mesquite. Mm -hmm. uh, John, mm -hmm. Yeah, Jonathan answered that one. Um, and then let's see, also how to register your nest box and put a link in there for where to do that. Oops. And so I think we're good. Oh, we great. Thanks. Yes, so that. Oh, well, a few more came in, but yeah, let's get to those at, at the end. Sure, yeah, that actually takes us really well into the next section where um, I'm gonna be talking about how to be a good host to Lucy's Warblers. So uh, here's where you come in, I guess, into this project of Lucy's Warbler conservation and nest boxes. If you have a yard with mesquites in it or around it, that increases your chances of having Lucy's Warblers we would love for you to be a part of this project and provide more uh, nesting opportunities for Lucy's warblers in urban and suburban and Tucson area and surrounding Phoenix. We wanna have it as far as the Lucy's uh, breeding range expands. If you're looking to plant a new shade tree in your yard, I would recommend a native velvet mesquite tree these trees are native to our area and they have a very strong tap root that um, makes them really strong in any of their monsoon storms and things like that. And it provides, there's some evidence that they provide a higher insect load to feed Lucy's warblers than their native, non-native counterparts, such as Chilean mesquite, for example. And if you don't have mesquite trees around, we also uh, install nest boxes in ironwoods and palo verde. And that's usually a similar type of habitat that they would uh, occupy if you're living next to a wash or any other right type of riparian area. That already increases your chances of having a Lucy's warbler. Avoid using pesticides in your yard because insects are a major food source for Lucy's warbler um, as they are insectivorous. Then of course, install Lucy's warbler nest box in your yard. They are only $10 at a nature shop in store and online. 100% of the proceeds go back into the nest box program and you never have to pay taxes at our nature shop. But also, if you're looking for a fun DIY project, we also provide plans for nest box construction on our website. And that link is listed here and will be also in the follow-up email. So here are some recommend recommendations for installation of Lucy's Warbler nest boxes. Uh, we recommend installing it six to 10 feet high. You can, you can go higher, of course, as we've tested up to 15 feet, but that's often not needed or your mesquite may not be tall enough to even support something like that with a, a, a thick enough branch. You can put them up either vertically on the trunk like this, or you can put it on a horizontal branch, just like this, just attaching the top. Uh, you want to provide smaller branches around the nest box. Uh, that's a very important part as 
that provides that feel of security and concealment for Lucy's warblers that I've noticed that they prefer. And sometimes the trunks don't have that type of vegetation around. So you may want to put it up somewhere that does have that. Um, as well, uh, if you didn't have a nest in the past years, but you've put up a nest box, you can move it around a little bit this year and see if you have a better luck in a different location around the tree. You should um, avoid direct afternoon sun on the box. So east to north exposure is recommended. Uh, some angle to the box is okay, <clears throat> up to a few degrees, but mostly you want to keep the cup of the nest box upright to support the eggs. I've noticed that if the nest box is a little bit tilted, then the Lucy's warblers will build up that side a little bit with their nest to make sure that it creates a nice horizontal cup and nothing rolls out. If you have a few trees you want to install nest boxes, make sure to space them about 20 feet. Um, this is what we found works best in yards. Uh, while we found them nest closer than that in the wild, that was in pristine mesquite woodland where many um, Lucy's warbler territories overlap. But in the yards, uh, about 20 feet is best. If you have other nest boxes for other species, uh, you want to follow a similar spacing as well for that. If you already have a nest box installed, now is a good time to visit it again to get it ready for Lucy's warbler arrival. You should always clean out the old nesting material out because it collects uh, some nesting parasites and is just um, doesn't weather all that well. But granted, Lucy's warblers don't have a choice when they're using the same cavity in the wild, but that does come at a price to them. You can also find that the nest is missing from the nest box. You could have sworn it was there last spring, but not anymore. And that's just because many uh, bird species use other species nesting material as that saves them a lot of time and trouble finding it for their nest. So if you do have a nest, go ahead and pinch the uh, nesting material with a gloved hand or pliers and pull it out because it often comes out in one piece. Mask and gloves do help and I know we all have them now so uh, that should be all taken care of and then when you want to make sure that the nest boxes are secured still from the year before, so you want to make sure no screws have uh, come out or that the nest box is still very sturdy on the tree. And that's best done before the end of February is what I say, or um, first week of March is probably at the latest that I would want to do that type of work because um, you don't want to be meddling with it once the Lucy's warblers arrive in mid-March and start looking for safe cavities to use. And also please register your nest boxes. Um, you'll find the registration link on the little instruction sheet that is um, on the box when you buy one from us but also you will find that on our website if you are building your own nest box and you will have the instructions on how to put it up and where to register the nest box. And that way we're able to see how far we spread the nest boxes, how are they getting used, um, are there more urban nest boxes being used. So this really gives us a lot of information. And if you end up having a Lucy's uh, use your nest box, go ahead and send me an email. Uh, let me know and I'll be able to mark it in our database. And that way we will able to put it as a successful nest on our map as well. And if you're interested in this project some more, this is again the link of course 
it will be in the email following this presentation, but spread the word about it. Um, you get an S box if your yard can support a Lucy's Warbler, give one as a gift. Um, we always are looking for nest box builders. If that's something that you enjoy doing, uh, woodworking, any type of uh, projects like that, then go ahead and send me an email and we will figure something out where we can work together because these nest boxes go very fast and we have projects at, uh, happening, new projects every year that we need nest boxes for as well. And finally, I would just like to thank you for being here and together we've been able to reach out to a greater community and do work together with school children, University of Arizona students, veteran attended woodcrafting clubs and other numerous projects that all relate back to the Lucy's Warbler project. And thank you to all of our, all of our wonderful volunteers also to make it happen. So thank you so much. And do we have any questions? Yeah, yeah, we have a few here. So okay. um, I might have missed it, but did you um, talk about Lucy's Warbler raising two different broods? Yes, correct. Okay, so yeah, I missed that part. But uh, <laughs> so there's a couple questions. Uh, do we go in after the first brood to clean out the nesting material or do we leave that there? How do, how do we go about that? Um, that's a good question. We haven't tested it one way or the other. The, um, the nest before where we were able to monitor it with live camera, it showed that the Lucy's Warbler pair decided to use a nest box adjacent to it for their new, um, for their second brood. So it seems like it might be a good idea, but you just want to make sure that it, you're monitoring and you know that there's no more activity in the nest box, then you can clean it out again. But um, there's some evidence that the nests are reused in some uh, instances. And so I would just say the most important part is to clean it out every year before the breeding season. And that would make sure that they have a fresh start every year. Yeah, that makes sense. There's a couple questions about what types of nails or screws do I use to hang up my uh, Lucy's Warbler box? How do you secure it? Um, just some advice on attaching the nest box to the tree. Yeah, so we've been using um, galvanized outdoor grade screws that would hold up well in the weather. And that's been the best method that we've used just because it really provides a very secure, no swaying type of um, installation. But we've also used um, baling wire type of wire that we had to use in locations that we couldn't use screws. And so that is also an option for you. You just want to make sure that there's not a whole lot of swaying happening with the um, bailing wire and you want to re reinstall it almost every year so that you're not strangling the tree with the um, bailing wire as well. It's good to know. Uh, let's see. So Catherine uh, was wondering, are there two sizes of nesting boxes on the Nature Shop website? I, I looked at that yesterday and I think there's only one, but uh, we, we just sell that one size of nest box, correct? Yeah, so we sell the larger volume of triangle nest box, and that's the only one we're selling. On the Nature Shop website, um, there's two listings for the, for the uh, triangle nest box. One of them is just a nest box, and the other one is the triangle nest box plus a warbler guide bundle type thing. And that's, it's just the same thing. It just includes a warbler guide if you want that. Uh, at our nature shop and at our physical nature shop, we offer a couple of different, um, we offer the triangle box for the main part. 
And then we also offer one other design that has also been used previously. But of course, tri triangle has been the number one most used one. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, when you clean out your nest box, you don't have to use any solutions. You just remove the nest, right? Right. So you don't have to um, use any type of solution. Usually everything that needs to be removed comes out with the nesting material. You just kind of um, get everything out and that's good to go. The wood is untreated and you don't want anything to be soaked into the wood and then back into the nest. Right. Denise was wondering uh, about Lucy's warbler populations. Uh, have, are they being monitored? Have we seen any positive impact uh, on those populations from the nest box program? So we haven't done any type of uh, density type projects uh, to see if uh, nest boxes are affecting them in that way. Uh, I know that the nest boxes are outputting a lot of fledglings. We can't say that those fledglings would not be there without the nest boxes with certainty, but I just, um, we know that this does help decrease the competition among the uh, Lucy's warbler pairs so that more, there are more opportunities for them to raise those two successful broods um, in one season. So that's something that we were looking into and potentially might um, do a study on that and see if there is any type of correlation between the nest box um, installation and the density of Lucy's warblers in an area. But um, it's hard to quantify it at the moment, but uh, we know that Lucy's warblers, like other cavity nesting species, are limited by the availability of available um, nesting cavities. So that's definitely decreasing that stressor on their breeding um, phenolo phenology, I guess. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult to tell right now, but we know that before Lucy's warblers get to any point of where we need to get a conservation plan and they're, you know, we don't want them to get too threatened or endangered, of course. And there's numerous Lucy's warblers around, but if with nest boxes, we can help them from getting there, that's great and we should. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So is there uh, any info on survival of Lucy's warbler fledglings? No, unfortunately, we don't monitor that as much. We, we just don't have the capacity at the moment. Right. Yeah, if someone wants to give us another grant to do that. Right? <laughs> You're always looking at new opportunities because this, this project is just so, so interesting and we're learning so much and we're contributing so much information about this species as well. Yeah, and Jonathan, I just put in there, or donations, that's a, that's a great point. And I just want to, because of that comment, uh, just relay that uh, many people who uh, signed up and registered for this free virtual class as part of their registration also donated. So thank you to all of you who, who already did that. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, let's see, let's go to a couple more questions. And uh, let's see, oh, I missed one right here. Um, I think Jonathan already answered this about the screws, but do we have any, you have a photo of uh, a baling wire insulation or? Um, I can include that in the follow-up email if needed. Okay. I can look yeah, or Etta, if you, if you want to um, respond to the email I send out to Olia and um, Olia will yeah. could, could yeah, help we'll do that. that. Basically, you would just make two holes in the back uh, where your screws would normally go to, then feed your baling wire through. And what I like to do is attach the top to a, a branch and then attach the bottom to a, a branch that's uh, parallel. And that way you don't have any type of swaying. Um, but of course, you just have to work with how your tree goes because there's some wonky mesquite trees out there. <laughs> Well, thank you, Olia. What I'm seeing from a lot of comments is that people are going to be putting up their their new nest boxes here pretty soon. Some people are ordering new nest boxes. Some people are going to go and register their Lucy's Warbler box. 
I have to make sure that I clean mine out before the end of the month and make sure mine's registered as well. Uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool to be a part of a bigger project like this. Yes, exactly. And we, we share the results and um, fun findings that we get along the way so you can learn more about what we do. Yeah, and I'll be sure to put in the follow-up email the link to register your box. I'll put in the link for how to, uh, I think, how to build a nest box if you want to do that. I'll put a link in there for the Lucy's Warbler Cam. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you could include the address to our nature shop, I'm seeing a question there, and maybe a link to online nature shop as well, because I know not many of us can get to our physical store at the moment. And I believe that you still have to make an appointment to go into our physical store on university. Yep. Yep. That is, that is the case. Yep. Cool. We'll send out a lot of links and you can choose yep. which one you want to click on. <laughs> yeah, all the resources. We want you guys to be equipped with all the resources. So. Yeah, and one last thing that I'll put out there is that I had my Lucy's Warbler box up for three years before it was used. So don't give up. Uh, you know, they got to be able to notice it. And uh, yeah, don't give exactly. up. And uh, mine got used on the second year because I moved it and I had more concealment around the nest box and immediately it was used and it was just so fun to watch them. Um, yeah, so good luck everybody. I know you can you can all host uh, Lucy's Warbler box potentially. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again, Olea. And um, feel free to unmute yourself and give Olea a uh, a uh, big thank you, show your gratefulness, and we'll see you all again soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. you Bye-bye. Thank you. Great thank you all. Great thank class. You. Thank you so much. See you guys later. Bye-bye.